Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1, GV, Whiskey 1, Good Vibrations, here to describe an antenna that I would love to try someday on the HF bands somewhere between 3 and 30 megahertz. Um, we might say, oh, let's say let's try this for the 7 megahertz band. But the key objective is to get the circumference of a loop antenna greater at least 100 wavelengths, greater than or equal to 100 wavelengths, at least a half a wavelength above effective ground, a perfect circle of very heavy wires so that the DC resistance around the circle is negligible, practically zero. We might say something like AWG number two. Now you're going to spend a fortune on that wire, aren't you? And an open wire feed line such as ladder line going to a transmatch, preferably a, a transmatch designed for perfectly balanced loads or a true balanced loads going to your radio and you, here's your loop antenna perfectly horizontal and perfectly circular obviously they're going to be an awful lot of current loops and an awful lot of current nodes going around this antenna and of course also there's going to be an enormous electrostatic charge buildup on this antenna unless you ground it somewhere you can do it through an inductor a uh, large, large value inductor anywhere on the antenna conductor, but I would suggest a good earth ground at the exact opposite end of the loop from where you feed it. Now, what are you going to get when you have uh, an antenna like this? You're going to get a, an omnidirectional radiation pattern more or less in the horizontal plane. As for the vertical uh, plane. I don't know exactly what the optimum ele elevation angle will be. I would imagine it would be quite low. So you get a, a radiation pattern similar to that of a vertical dipole, except for one very significant difference. You're going to get diversity of reception because of the enormous size of this loop. This point in the antenna, for example, is going to receive signals uh, in a different uh, phase, but more importantly, with different phasing or different fading characteristics than, say, this point or that point. So you're going to get diversity in both reception and transmission. You're going to get what is called spatial diversity. That means diversity over because of the enormous size in space, geometric space, of this antenna. You're not going to be using frequency diversity or phase diversity or anything like that, but rather spatial diversity. That's what I think you're going to get. I don't know, though, if anyone has ever tried anything like this. At 7 megahertz, a full wavelength is something on the order 40 meters. That's something on the order of 130 to 140 feet. So you're talking 1,300 to 1,400 feet. That's, a, that's about a quarter of a mile in circumference. On 8075, of course, a half a mile. And if you dare to try this on 160, uh, you're going to get about 1,600 meters or a mile of, of AWG number two wire. Uh, that to minimize the DC resistance. And you're also probably going to get broke trying this experiment. But uh, what price uh, ham radio experimentation, right? I think what you're going to get, though, most importantly, is spatial diversity 
transmission and reception which will minimize QSB that is fading on all of the bands that you use this antenna for I think do you agree disagree don't know don't care tell me I'm going to try to leave comments open once again my call letters W1GV uh, saying so long for now SK or VA did da did da did da